Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're going to be talking about solving limits of polynomials and rational functions. So if you want to look back, I have the definition of a limit right here along with um, the basic rules of limits. We're going to be going through these as well, so that'd be really great to have that in your back pocket. But let's go ahead and dive into it. If we're wondering, wondering what a polynomial is, it is a function that looks like this. 7x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. First of all, we're going to evaluate the limit just using our basic functions. So let's go ahead and plug this in. We get the limit as x approaches one of our entire polynomial. 7x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. The first rule I'm going to use is the sum and difference. Now that I've used the sum and difference rule, I just distributed that limit across all the separated terms. So I'm going to go ahead and use our next rule, which is the constant multiple. So I'm going to bring the constant outside the limit for each of them. Now that I've pulled the constant out of each of those terms, I'm going to now use the power rule. So I'm going to take the power outside all of the limits. For our final rule, I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate those limits as I do a linear function. So if we notice this limit right here on the end was the constant rule. When it's a constant, it's just equal to whatever that number is. So if we look at this, this looks pretty dang similar to the polynomial evaluated at 1, right? And so that's the trick that we're going to learn here. Let me go ahead and do this math. So I get 7 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2. So we get 7 plus 3 is 10, 4 plus 2 is 6, and I get a 16. So this is the rule. Let me go ahead and scroll down here real quick. If p of x is a polynomial, then the limit as x approaches a of p of x is just p of a. We're just going to plug in that x value and solve it out. So this is a really great rule to shortcut so we don't have to use all of those basic rules. We can just sum them up together and say, hey, it's a polynomial. I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate where it is. If you want to check this out with a graph, you totally can. See where it's approaching as we approach 1. You'll also see that it approaches 16. So now we're going to apply this to a rational function. So if p of x and q of x are polynomials, then p of x divided by q of x is a rational function. So it just takes two polynomials and divides them together. Just a fancy name for it. So we're going to go ahead and apply the polynomial rule to this rule. So we have the limit as x approaches a of p of x divided by q of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of p of x in the numerator divided by the limit as x approaches a of q of x in the denominator. This is super similar to the quotient rule. However, there is another requirement with this, and it's the fact that we cannot divide by 0. Since we cannot divide by 0, it has to be provided that the limit as x approaches a of q of x does not equal 0. Again, dividing by 0 is illegal, so let's go ahead and make sure we don't do that. We have a great example here. We have p of x is equal to 7x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. So same polynomial we were working with before, but now we have an additional polynomial q of x. That is equal to 2x squared plus 1. We are going to go ahead and evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 of p of x divided by q of x. Let's go ahead and make sure that our denominator is not equal to 0. So I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 1 of our denominator, which is 2x squared plus 1. Remember to put parentheses around the whole thing because you're evaluating the whole polynomial, not just the 2x squared, the whole thing. So I'm going to use my rule. I know I'm just going to plug in 1, so I get 2 times 1 squared plus 1, which is equal to 2 plus 1, which is 3 which is not equal to zero, so we're happy and we can apply this rule. So I'm going to go ahead and take the numerator, the limit as x approaches 1 of parentheses 7x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 2, 
and I'm going to go ahead and divide it as, um, by the limit as x approaches 1 of our denominator, 2x squared plus 1. We've already found what both of these equal. We found the numerator is equal to 16 and the denominator is equal to 3. That's as simplified as we're going to get, right? 3 does not go into 16, and so that's our solution. So this is the case. We can apply these rules when we're working just with a polynomial and when we're working with a rational function where the denominator is not equal to 0. In the future videos, we're going to talk about what if the denominator is equal to 0, and we have some methods of solving that. So go ahead and stay tuned for more. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave comments of what you would like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.